Outside the gates of Astera, our home in the New World, we've studied a vast ecosystem ruled by wyverns and their ancient relatives, the Elder Dragons. In our studies thus far, we've spent a considerable amount of time researching these wyverns and Elder Dragons. However, there are many strange and remarkable monsters to be found in the Old World as well. The Hunter's Guild has commissioned us to capture and study a type of monster you may not be familiar with. Travel with me back to the Old World. There's so much we have yet to learn. Today's research mission brings us to an arid desert region just outside the city of Laklak. We're searching for a large fanged beast known as Volvodon. Unlike the wyverns of the New World, fanged beasts, also referred to as pelagus, are warm-blooded mammalian monsters, and you'll find quite a large variety of them here in the Old World. It appears I'm being followed by a pack of gen prey. These bird wyverns are looking for an easy meal. They often prey upon large herbivores such as Apsaros, weakened by the extreme heat of this desert environment. The gen prey's long, curved fangs pack a powerful dose of paralytic venom. It's best if we move on before the pack becomes any more aggressive. These hermitars are another species you won't find often in the New World. They're what is known as a carapacean, or shelled monster. These small, hard-shelled hermitars are a common sight in the desert and jungle regions of the Old World and their brains are prized as a delicacy among hunters. Small hermitars such as these pose little risk to a hunter, however they are capable of growing much larger. This is the Damio hermitar, a fearsome predator. This carapacean has grown too large for its shell and moved into a new residence, what appears to be the skull of a monoblos. However, the thick carapace, bone-crushing claws, and armored skull foot of this Damio hermitar aren't its only defense. Hermitars are capable of storing large quantities of water in their bodies and often project this liquid in dangerous, highly pressurized jets. Hermitars are fascinating creatures, but this isn't the monster we're searching for today. Let's move on. Tracking a Volvodon in the wilds can often be a difficult task for hunters to undertake. This beast has an acute sense of smell and is exceptionally wary of human hunters. Here it is at last. This is the fang beast we've been searching for. The Volvodon is well adapted to life in the arid desert climates and volcanic regions of the Old World. Its heavily vascularized banded shell both absorbs and disperses heat and protects it from predators, while allowing the agile beast to roll about its environment at an impressive speed. The individual scales, or scutes, of the Volvodon's outer shell are composed of keratin, a fibrous protein that is also the primary structural component of hair, horns, and nails in other pelagus. The flexible outer layers of the Volvodon shell are underlain by bony plates called osteoderms, a form of dermal bone growth. Its shell is called a carapace. An insectivore, its long whip-like tongue is perfect for catching its favorite food, neoptrans, such as Banabra and Ultroth. Due in part to its primary diet of venomous insects, the Volvodon saliva contains a paralytic toxin, which it uses defensively to incapacitate potential threats. When startled or threatened, the Volvodon's natural reaction is to leap high into the air, rolling itself into its shell. There are few predators in this desert region that are capable of matching the Volvodon's speed and agility, and even fewer with jaws capable of biting through the defensive layers of its heavy banded shell. Exhausted, but relatively unharmed by the barrage of bowgun fire I've been subjecting it to, the Volvodon retreats into a nearby cave to rest. This is the perfect opportunity to capture the beast for further study by the Hunter's Guild. With temperatures in the desert soaring to over 100 degrees, the Volvodon prefers to make its nest in cool underground caves where it can shelter from the heat and remain safe from larger predators. I'll notify the Guild that this specimen has been captured and await the reports of their biological research team. Once the studies are complete, this beast will be tagged and released back into the wild so it can be further studied in its natural environment. As always, this has been Strawfoot. Thank you so much for your continued support and for clicking all those YouTube buttons for me. It really does mean a lot. If you're interested in getting further involved in the discussion, or maybe just looking for a cool place to find new friends to hunt with, you should check out my Discord. There's a link in the description. As always, 
This video is made possible by the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you so much. One final thing. Before I go, I'd like to highlight a recent comment I received on one of my lore videos. YouTube viewer Adrenaline Rush 369 says, Hey Strawfoot, very nice videos. I watched your work in a marathon, and I like how you present the lore in a nature documentary-like format. However, as a scholar who has immersed himself in the Monster Hunter world, the peace out at the end pulls me back and reminds me that this is a YouTube video. All in all, good job. Subbed and I look forward to watching more of your work. Okay, Adrenaline Rush, thanks for the sub. And uh, let me address the second part of your comment. I think you're right. I need a way cooler outro line than peace out, right? Maybe something a little more creative or, I don't know, immersive? Leave me some suggestions down in the comments and I'll pick some of my favorites to use in future videos. In the meantime, this will have to do though. Happy hunting and peace out.